The final stakeholder we're going to consider when implementing change is the general community. So we looked at five managers, employees, customers, suppliers, and we're going to finish with the general community or the local community. So what does the local or general community want from business? Uh, what are their direct or vested interests? They are to benefit from employment opportunities from the business, for the business to participate and provide benefit to their community, and more importantly, do no harm, don't damage where you are based. So therefore, there's pretty much an expectation that the business will be ethical and socially responsible and do its business in an environmentally friendly and sustainable manner. So looking at change, what are the potential positive impacts of change by a business for the general community? What do they get out of it? Well, the business will hopefully, if they change successfully, they will then employ more people in that local community. Therefore, if they employ more people, they're going to pay more taxes. And if they make high profits, they'll pay taxes too. And then the government can spend that on services in the local community. And also businesses which make changes often become more socially responsible. So often changes are to reduce environmental damage and waste and so on. And that's going to benefit the uh, local environment as well. On the negative side, change often involves a business lowering costs by sending jobs overseas or maybe to another state or region. And therefore that means people in the local community lose their jobs. And therefore the business, uh, sorry, the government has to pay unemployment and local people lose their jobs, which forces other local businesses to close because no one's got to spend any money and so on. And lastly, um, also from not just the economics, but the government services standpoint as well, there's less taxes from all those employees in the local community. There's less money to be spent on schools and hospitals and so on. Our examples that we're looking at are the Apple Watch being changed from a smartphone on your wrist to it is now a health device and Mary Barra at General Motors saying we are now an electric car maker, all electric by 2035. So how's that going to affect the general community? Well, where these businesses are based, so we'll talk about, say, Silicon Valley in America and also they, they do have um, head offices in Australia. So the people in those places are going to be able to develop new skills and gain jobs. Um, so you, you can be comfortable if you learn the skills that these businesses now require, so you learn how to design an electric car, there's going to be a job for you at General Motors in Australia. What about with Apple? Well, particularly in Australia, those jobs designing things, they're called white collar jobs. They're the jobs that we really have to create in Australia because the blue collar manual labor jobs, they're going. Other countries can make things better, cheaper and faster. So we are losing out. So this is good because it does create more jobs of the future for us. So that's also General Motors too. Therefore, it means hopefully reduced unemployment and increased taxes. And then the Australian government, we're in COVID at the moment. So the government needs a lot of money to keep us all the economy sort of above water. Um, and doing this will enable Australian businesses, or sorry, the Australian government to raise those taxes. What about the negatives? Well, look at Apple, for example, those product design jobs to design the new software for the Apple Watch, new features, new apps, that can be done anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Other countries have better IT education systems than ours. We're not good at training school age children with technology. So why would Apple even bother to use Australian workers? They're probably going to take those jobs overseas and that's going to hurt our local communities. General Motors already closed the Holden factory in 2017. And then in 2020, they said no more Holden at all. So those there's thousands of jobs gone. It might recreate or might create a few new jobs sort of moving to electric cars here, but you're definitely not going to replace all those thousands of jobs that were in Australia previously at that Holden factory. And why? Because those jobs are going to go overseas. Now, if those jobs go overseas, Australians are unemployed, and that means there's no government taxes, and the bulk of the benefits basically go somewhere else and not to Australia and our general community.